Um, this is a quick overview of how the um, presentation is going to go. We have our, we're going to talk about our concept, the design, the block diagram or the technology behind it, um, how our PLC works, how our microcontroller works, the drivers and stepper motors, as well as the IoT peripherals we threw in, um, the Amazon Echo and Arduino with uh, the One Shield API. Then we're going to go through the timeline of how we created it, some improvements and challenges we face, and the overall cost. So the, the concept uh, kind of came to us as a, an industrial automation design uh, theme project. Um, so in ET280, um, we really like the idea of the, the safety features and controlling motors. So really the idea of taking our um, circuits knowledge, our electrical knowledge, and applying that to um, machinery, um, more industry standard things like motors and controllers and sensors. So with the design, we were inspired by our fellow CETA uh, members and the buying cards from the CETA store. So we wanted to build the vendor so it's easily um, so it's easy to transport and repair and make, uh, maintain. So what we have is a two-level uh, uh, vending machine with two conveyor belts on them. So it's supposed to vend and sell the most popular products. And then the, back, uh, the black rails are the V-slot rails that hold the product cup on there, and they move the X and Y direction. So um, the, we, have, we were inspired by the 3D printer, because the 3D printer is easily maintained and it moves easily with just stepper motors and timing belts. So that was the idea behind it. And then, so this is the block diagram basically showing how it works. So you start in the upper left with the user input. So this can be either pressing a button on our HMI or by talking to the Amazon Echo. So let's say you wanted to press it. It's going to talk to our PLC, which is already equipped with the ladder logic to hold the output high. Then our microcontroller is going to know, hey, I want this product. It's going to start our PWM, sending that um, pin to our uh, separate driver circuits. And that's going to move the separates and bring in your product. If you wanted to talk to the vendor, you could just say, Alexa, turn on and whatever product you want. So that would work with our ESP266 Wi Fi chip. That's going to also interface with the microcontroller and do the same thing. It's going to vend you your product. At the same time that the microcontroller is um, pulsing, it's also going to send a signal to our Arduino with the One Shield API. So that's going to do two things it's going to um, data log in a CSV file which product was sold and it's going to check um, if we have enough products left. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the PLC and the HMI. Uh, to start off with the PLC, uh, thanks to the help of Professor Berger, we were able to get a Siemens PLC. Uh, we could have gone two ways. We could have gone a ladder logic or S uh, SPL, which is a sister language of uh, STL, which is more commonly known. Uh, our ladder logic basically consisted of uh, having a normal uh, open contact with uh, assignments at the end, or uh, we, would, we would call it motors. <coughs> Within that network, we have timers, which is a uh, data blocks. That timer prevented uh, any person from bending, being able to bend uh, one product while the other product is still being bended. Uh, and this visual down here, you can see, uh, we had to create a, a tag table. This tag table is where we defined all of our internal markers, which you can think of as uh, uh, virtual inputs and uh, our physical outputs. Here you can see our internal markers down here, which were all the different products. Each product had its own network, and all the physical outputs right here, which uh, triggered the outputs high. Uh, on this HMI also, it also had its own dedicated uh, tag table. So basically what we were doing was uh, tagging the tag. It's another tag. Uh, this made it easy because uh, they had to go in sync with the PLC tag and the HMI tag. So it was, it's easy for someone that's programming this and using this software to keep track of all the internal markers, all the inputs, all the outputs. Uh, in this screen, you can see uh, all these are buttons. These buttons all have events, as it's called in the software. And the good thing about the software is that it's industry used. Whether it's a low-level Siemens PLC or the higher-level PLC, this software is everything that's uh, this software is used in industry. So going back to the buttons. These buttons have different events. The click event that you see here, we could activate a screen. So once you click that button, it'll go to the next screen. While also clicking that button, when it's pressed or released, we are uh, setting the bits from the tag table and resetting the bits. So um, we use the microcontroller for our PWM, just a really simple program to get our own PWM going, setting a pin, highs and low. 
Um, we wrote the program to be uh, really simplified with our custom functions. So that way in the main loop of our uh, program, we're just checking to see if our inputs were pulled low. So we're using the inter internal pull up resistors to make sure we're not getting any false reads. And um, the steps for each motor, it's all defined at the top. So if you want to do any maintenance on the program, you need to change, um, add more products or move it more, farther, higher, lower, you just go to the top, change those um, integers, and you're good to go. So the steppers that we used were, or the uh, driver that we used for the steppers was from uh, SparkFun, which is the Allegro A3967. So we really used this just to simplify the method of uh, stepping the motor. And they're easy to repair, so if anything were to burn out or solder came off, we can easily uh, replace one. And then also the output voltage is six to 30 volts, so it can really work with any motor that you choose, any stepper motor that you choose. Uh, because in our in vendor, we have six different stepper motors with different current ratings. It really just shows how versatile they are. They can work with each of them. And then also, uh, the driver has a micro-stepping option, which will allow it to step uh, less than uh, 1.8 degrees. So if we really wanted to work with accuracy, uh, we have the option. And then also, the most important feature on the driver is the digital, digital translator, which is a pin that you set um, that the PWM is uh, set to and will energize the, the stepper motor and the step power, how, however many steps we wanted. Uh, the frequency, we chose a 1.25 kilohertz frequency, which is a moderate speed. Uh, the max is 500 kilohertz, but we chose 1.25, so when it's bending on the conveyor belt, it's not shooting the IC chips at the glass or at the consumer or the user. And then the motor, we use the Vexa stepper motor from uh, Orient Motors and also given to us uh, from Anon. And uh, these motors are a two-phase bipolar uh, stepper motor. And this, it has a high holding torque. So when the product is midway in the, X, in the Y position on the second level and it's dispensing or bending a heavier object, it'll stay in, in place so it doesn't fall or slip uh, any of the steps and miss them. So um, going the other route, let's say if the user wanted to talk to vendor, um, all you gotta do is say hi to Alexa. So the way we're doing this, um, it was actually inspired by the International Society of Automation. It's a club here on campus. They were gonna hold an event, which was basically a competition to see who can get some smart home project with Alexa going in a day. So um, we were able to use the ESP266, which is a, a Wi-Fi chip. Um, basically, we're taking code that makes the A266 look like a Belkin Wemo device. So since Alexa is already ready to go with these Belkin Wemo switches and outlets, we just make the um, ESP266 look like that, and it's already equipped, the, the board comes with relays. So basically we talk to Alexa and we can control these relays high-low, which is again pulling our inputs low so the PIC knows we want that product. So we also use the One Shield, with it, which is the shield for the Arduino, and it has a different applications, and we use the data logger application and the Twitter application. So. Uh, the data logger in the program, uh, if the user or consumer presses the button on the HMI or talks to Alexa, it'll send a signal to the shield and it'll increment the counter for each product. So we have product A, B, and C, and we have the date that, well, the month that it was vended and how many were vended uh, in that month. And then we could, on the HMI, we can save it and export it uh, with a .csv file. And then in the program, it'll look on how many, uh, it'll look at the counter and see how many were vended. And if the product was vended more than three times or you can set it, uh, it'll send a Twitter notification so people can check it. An example of uh, one of the uh, Twitter uh, notification is uh, don't shed crocodile tears for these alligator clips. There's only one left. So, uh, so consumers can look at this and just see how many are left or if they've, if they've been sold out. Uh, here's a video of our project uh, being demoed, where, which we'll get back to if time permits. Uh, here you can look at our project GAN chart. Uh, one of our stronger points for this uh, project was our parts acquisition. Thanks to the help of uh, Professor Herger and uh, Professor Nam, we were able to get uh, the major components of this project, which includes the uh, Siemens uh, PLC software, the uh, step motors, and, uh, and obviously uh, more than half our time was spent uh, testing, simulating, trial and error, troubleshooting this project. And here you can see our uh, build of our materials. As you can see on the top, we were uh, Professor Herger, Professor Nam, they let us borrow those uh, major components. And here's our total at the bottom. Uh, 
uh, the big uh, third of that price was uh, was the V-slots, the linear actuators that we bought, which uh, made our X and Y system. So one of the challenges that we faced in this project from the very get-go with the PLC was uh, SPL. It was a new language to us. Uh, we chose not to delve, uh, delve right, uh, deep into it because it was, like I said, a new uh, language. And we were more knowledgeable and familiar with the ladder logic. Also using the TIA software, which is seen as a programming software, there was a big learning curve on that because it was the first time we were introduced to that. One of the improvements we could add would be to simplify the wiring. Right now we have one single line per product. Um, we can really condense that and expand the vending machine to have a lot more products if we use serial communication. So something like SPI or I squared C could really consolidate the signal lines we're using and be able to communicate with the microcontroller or PLC so we know which product we want. Uh, another pro uh, problem that we faced was with the stepper motors. Uh, because all of them are different and have different cur current ratings, uh, some of the stepper motors will vibrate and won't uh, fully step uh, compared to some of the uh, better steppers that we have that will vent smoothly. And then also with the conveyor belt, um, we're using an anti-static uh, mat. So we're using that to as the belt. So right now it's a little loose, so sometimes when the stepper motor is uh, moving or tries to vent, the conveyor belt will stay in one spot if the product isn't have, uh, heavy enough. Uh, as you can tell, our project was uh, IoT inspired uh, with uh, tweeting and Alexa. I think the next level, that a uh, big improvement that we could take on this project would be to make it an industrial IoT. We know that PLC is a Profinet protocol, which is uh, used in industrial Ethernet. Uh, the next the next step would maybe be to introduce a gateway, which would convert that Profinet maybe into modulus TCP IP, which would uh, connect to a PLC over the internet. And we will be able to introduce a payment processor. That payment processor could take the money, send data to a centralized system for this vendor, and it would uh, become an industrial IoT in that sense, uh, in other senses too. Uh, but that's pretty much it for our project. Right now, it's just uh, on our system. Don't take too many slides. <laughs> so, uh, we already uh, mentioned Professor Herder like a million times already, but we wanted to thank him again. Um, as well as the entire ET department. Um, everyone was playing a big hand in helping us, um, even our fellow students, with how we should do the project, um, getting software from Siemens, and we just had so much support from um, Professor Anon as well. So um, before we take questions, we're gonna show you guys our little demo video, kind of like a, a little product ad for vendor. Hello. Vendor is a smart vending machine. With industrial automation via Siemens PLC. Indeed, the logging with one shield. accessible and manageable. And if a product is low, vendor will send a tweet letting everyone know. Alexa, turn off and on. I was just showing the lag demo so you don't think there's movie magic behind it all. And of course, uh, thanks to everyone again. Thank you. So any uh, questions, criticisms? Does anyone want to buy a vendor? <laughs> All right, well, we're not going to wait any longer. <laughs>